my wonderful quilters. I'm Kathy with True Cotton Company. And if you are not a quilter and you're watching this because you got excited by the title of the video, you're certainly fabulous and we're glad to have you here with us today. As you saw in the video, we are making the Wednesday Addams Quilt. I don't know if you all have been watching this show on Netflix, but they have a beautiful stained glass wall in their bedroom. And I did a quilt with all straight lines that are in, is inspired by that. It's using the Astrid pattern from GE Designs. This is a really fun quilt and I've been wanting to make it for a while. And so that's what we're gonna make today. I'm doing the lap size, which I thought was 56 by 56, but it looks like 65 by 65. So <laughs> got my numbers a little backwards. But here's the block you can see coming together and we're gonna sew this block together. And it's really fun. Now one thing she does is this is a much smaller piece of this large piece. She has you trim off these corners with her point trimmers. Hmm. And so I got these just the other day and you use the 60 degree one with this. And all you do to do this is you line it up right with your triangle and then you cut that tip off. But I checked this time and time again, and if you take that point and you want the point straight up, you're not worried about this line being at a 45, and you line this tool up, you can see it's right about a quarter inch you take off. So you can take a ruler, hmm. and with that point, get right at the top of that point and do your trim. Or if you have the nice trim tools, and I know she makes them, I know there's a few companies that make them, but you just trim off that corner. And then once you do that, when you've got this piece that you've sewn your two sides to, this will just line up right at the top here. So instead of having that point sticking off, you get this nice line and then the straight hmm. line. And so that helps line everything up. And that's also been really useful at getting these pieces and these pieces to be pretty well lined up to make the pattern that it makes. Now I know if you've been watching the show, and we've, uh, we've got lots of new subscribers. You know I do a lot of pinning and as I mm -hmm. talked about last week, I do like these little glass head pins from Clover. I just make sure and do the beginning and the end. And then I like to do the middle. Just make sure you've got everything lined up. Hmm. And then we'll do at the quarter points. Just make sure that's nice and lined up. And then mm -hmm. I do like to sew this piece on the bottom because this is the biased edge. This is a straight piece so it has less stretch. And so you just come over to your sewing machine, sew a quarter inch. And just going to watch your seams there. Make mm -hmm. sure we've got everything hmm. lined up nicely. this block coming together and you can see that lines up pretty nicely there and I just uh, press towards the black which is your background in this quilt 
And so I just like to set those seams. And I don't use any steam or anything. I know people do. And if that's what works for you, that's what you should do. I don't put steam in my iron. I've heard tell, and don't know if this is true, I just don't put steam in mine that it can uh, wear out your iron a little quicker and sip. Since I haven't had any trouble without steam, I just do like that. Now we're going to do this other side just the same way. Remember that little point we trimmed off at the top gives us a nice lining up. And then just along here. And do that same pinning at the beginning and mm -hmm. the end. And down at this little point here, it's hard to pin this little edge, so I actually have been using one of my clips down at that bottom point. And then we just want to make sure everything's straight throughout here. Go ahead and get some pins in and pin as much or as little as you like. I know we all have our preferences. And we're just doing the same thing as we did on the other side. Just do a quarter inch. It's a really nice, fun project to do. <laughs> you make a block, you cut that block into these three pieces, you add those two black in the middle to the middle section, you trim off those points, and then you get this really fun block. I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. How it comes together. And then we need to trim this block up to size. And since it's not the pattern, I can't tell you the size, or since it's not my pattern, I can't tell you the sizes. But you just Come over here, I need to grab the stripology ruler, which I have under here. I want to turn this block around this way. Because when you're trimming this to the way she has you trim it, you want to trim as little off this what we call the larger pieces outer edge. We're tr really trimming this corner the most. So we just want, you use the ruler as she says, we just want everything lined up and we're just doing trimming there. And here, and then I just want to turn this around this way. And do that same thing. And be sure and follow her instructions. She does a really nice job and writes such really good instructions. And things are quite easy with the stripology rulers. She came up with a lot of tools that help ease the process. And so there's just this little bit of trimming. We'll just trash that. And now, let me grab my next pieces. We'll see how this quilt starts to come together. All right, I got all my pieces laid out here. Wanted to show you that here's the block we just did. 
You do end up sewing some sashing pieces to the block in between each of the blocks. And so I've got that sewn on to there. So all we have to do is sew this onto this block. Mm -hmm. And this is just like any quilt you would do. And I do have, still do that. You know the routine now, the beginning and the end, the middle <laughs> and the quarters. It's just hmm. a little insurance policy that everything's staying in place. We'll say these little pins are very sharp, have very sharp points on them. So that's hmm. one thing is they glide right through with those sharp points, but then you can, <laughs> when you brush up against them, you do notice. Hmm. All right, and we're just sewing a quarter inch. to the background. Let's make sure I have this laid out properly. Yeah, because this is going to come up. This is the bottom half, and then these circle around, similar to this side, which is all sewn together. So that looks good. So now it's just sewing these two pieces together. I do like sewing my quilts together in these four patch pieces. She recommends sewing rows together and then putting this strip long the whole way across. I don't like so. I try to reduce the number of long seams that I sew. So I, this piece, for mine, and you're going to want to measure yours if you're making this, and you'd want to do the four patch version, this was cut 27 inches, and this one was 25 and three quarters. So that was my sizes for the sashing that goes in between, and then that'll be a part that we line up when we're putting that whole bottom half together. And so this is going to be similar to what we've been doing, except I'll use more pins now. And so always that beginning and end, because that's the part you want to make sure lines up, mm -hmm. especially at this point in the game. Hmm. And then come for this middle. These are going at about a quarter uh, of the way across. And then I want to fill in in between, so with the eighth point. Sew a quarter inch the whole way across again. 
to move my pan kitchen closer. And this may be a great project for yourself. I know a lot of people who I've talked to about it, they're like, oh, my kids or my nieces or grandkids would really love this quilt. So if you would really love it or you know someone in your life who would enjoy this, this is a great version to make. I know it doesn't have the curves of the stained glass, but it, I think it's going to give a really nice stained glass effect with some easier piecing but still stunning with the Astrid pattern from GE Designs. a little attention to because I'm pretty sure yeah, I want to do this one and so that the seams nest between the two sides mm -hmm. this one I want to press towards this color side mm. and you can watch that and if there's one spot where we have a doubled up edge it's probably okay now this is trickier it does not want to lay this way it's it's much happier if you're pressing towards that middle but we can make it hmm. do what we need it to mm -hmm. So it's just like this, and we just want to make sure we lay it the correct way. And now we're going to be doing the same way we just did that one. So I'm going to take time, and I'm just going to pin all of this the same as I've been doing. Sew this together and get the bottom half of this quilt done, and I'll see you back here as soon as that's finished. All right, I've finished sewing this bottom half together. Earlier today, I did get the top half together. So now it's just doing this long seam, which is going to be my first long seam until I get to borders. And you just do that the same way as we've done everything. Make sure the white side's on the white and the colored half is on the colored side. And then we're going to pin together. I do want to do it this way these ends and then the middle and then this one's a lot a lot of pinning and a lot of sewing so I'll be doing this and I'll see you back here in just a second all right it's time for the grand reveal look how lovely this turns out I hope you all enjoy it I am so proud of it if you look here I kind of want to talk about how I did this a little different than the pattern which uses if you see here in the middle all the same colors of course I have my black and my white side which is quite obvious but if you look here you can see I used this dark blue as a center I did an ombre yellow and this light blue so those were my three centers for this quilt. So I needed to get a quarter yard of these colors and that gave me a strip to use in the quilt as well. And then I used eight colors here with the light purple, dark purple. There's an ombre blue, of course the yellow, uh, a mm. thatched darker blue with these gray toned blues. Here I used a dark, this is an off white, not a solid white grunge white paper and then if you can see there's a zen gray a light gray from Bella just to add some shadowing 
to give a little depth to that black and white side. And then the beautiful colors on the opposite side. Oh. And I just think it makes a beautiful stained glass look. Obviously the stained glass is circular in the pattern, in the show, but this is a take on this show. I think it's a really good version of it. So do check out this Astrid pattern if you're interested in this. Feel free to email me at kathy at truecottonco.com to if you have any questions about the exact quantities that I've used. We're going to come back next week and put borders on this quilt because I'm going to do a half colorful side and a half black side. So do come back and tune in with us next week where we continue finishing our Wednesday Adams quilt. I hope if you're sewing this week, you win that game of Bob and Chicken. If you're enjoying what we're doing, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you've enjoyed this quilt, go ahead and give me a like. Let me know if you've enjoyed projects like mm. this. We'll keep trying to find fun ones. And certainly hope that you all win your game of Bob and Chicken. We'll see you back next week. Bye.